YouTube, Big Scroll 58 here, and welcome back. Now this is going to be the final part in this revolver uh, reconditioning. And in this part, I'm just going to do the, uh, the final polishing and a reassembly. And what, what you're going to see at the end is how the revolver turned out. It was I was able to find a, a pair of these uh, period correct uh, stocks for this gun. Uh, these look like they are maybe a Brazilian rosewood in pretty good shape and I just used some scotch bright to remove the old finish and uh, I'll refinish these with some uh, wipe on poly and uh, I'll, I'll put these on the gun just to try to put it back to its original uh, factory state now I'm just going to polish it out to uh, try to get rid of the uh, the leftover abrasions from the from the wet sanding uh, I think the total time of the wet sanding was about, I don't know, 30 to 35 minutes. Uh, my polish of choice is the uh, Mother's Mag and Aluminum polish. This shouldn't take too long. I'm not going to do the whole gun on, on camera. I'm going to just do one part of it so you can see how the wet sanding is, is a beneficial to the polishing. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on it. Uh, It's going to go pretty quick, so like I said, I'm not going to bore you with the whole polishing. I'm just going to do a, a small piece section, and then uh, I'll do the rest of it off camera. But I just want to show you how fast this will, this will, this will polish up. Just add a little bit of polish to the gun and start polishing. Now, typically what you'll see with this is you'll see these pads turn really black but because it's this has been wet sanded a lot you won't see a lot of that this uh this will clean up polish up really fast just want to get all the areas that are wet sanded at this point i'm not trying to be super neat and cautious or anything but this is going to go pretty quickly and you'll see exactly how much you benefit from doing it, the wet sanding on this. I'm just going to do just this, this side panel right here and I'm going to show you how much, how good this looks. All right, I'm going to just buff that off and you how how well this turns out and this was about just three minutes of polishing that's about three minutes of polishing and you can see how well that turned out how reflective that is And this won't take but about, uh, I'll be done with this gun in maybe 15 or 20 minutes. All right, we're going to continue. I'm going to go down the barrel, right along the front of the frame. Like I said, I'm not going to do this whole gun on camera. I just want to show you how much faster these these projects will polish out when you incorporate the wet sanding with it. This won't take long at all. These pads, they uh, I like them because they're soft and they're flexible and they can get into tight tight curves and contours much easier than you can with a with a cotton cloth or a t-shirt. And they'll seem to just hold the right amount of polish on them. I'll be able to 
finish this polishing maybe uh, about 15 or 20 minutes the complete gun where it would probably take me a couple hours if I had not done the wet sanding I'm sure some of you are going to find some benefit in this or that and some of you won't it's okay uh, let's see how fast this goes I want to do is I want to stay off of that top strap because like I said I don't want to I don't want to take that little I'm gonna call it bead blast and I'm not really quite sure what it is but it's a it's a low reflective finish I want to leave that just like that I don't want to change it uh, this looks pretty good so far I can see these these pads they're not you know changing colors as uh, bad as it would if I hadn't done the wet polishing you polish with these about 10 seconds with, without wet polishing and that pad would have been used up I hit this back strap real quick Let me show you how how nicely this polished up in just a few minutes So, I'm going to do a few more minutes of this on camera, and then I'm going to just turn the camera off, finish doing it, and then I'll show you the finished product once I get it polished, and cleaned up, and reassembled. This is going to look pretty good. That wet sanding does the majority of the polishing for you all right let's take a look at this see how it looks I can't speak for you but I think that looks pretty darn good and these lights probably have so much glare on it that you really can't see it as well as I can. But that looks pretty darn good. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of this gun off camera. No need to bore you with all of this repetitive stuff. Nobody wants to sit here and watch a video of me polishing a whole gun. So I'm going to do this off camera. And I'll get it cleaned up and reassembled. And the next time you see it, you'll see it in its, in its final state. Be right back. All right, I'm back. And this is the uh, completed project, my Taurus uh, 689VR. Now, I finished polishing uh, this gun out off camera, and total polishing time took about 20 to 25 minutes. Took a little bit longer than I thought, just because of some of the nooks and crannies that I tried to get a little bit more attention to. But oh, it took just about, right about the same amount of time that I thought it would take. That wet sand and really cuts your polishing time. I uh, refinished the stocks, which took about uh, three days time, but actually only took about a couple of hours because you only have to work on them just, just a few minutes at a time. And uh, this is the finished product. And I must say I'm very happy with how it all turned out, especially compared to where I started with it. Now that big deep scratch, scratch and gouge that's here on the on the panel or at least on the side of the frame I can't feel it but it's still visible at the right angle 
but I knew I wouldn't get it all out completely. But all in all, I think the finish turned out very nicely. It is a bright, clear finish. And uh, it turned out great. Uh, the stocks turned out very well, uh, at least for what they are. Now, uh, these stocks aren't in the same category with Smith & Wesson stocks. But they're, they're nice for what they are. Uh, they're some budget-priced uh, Taurus stocks. I know people like to compare Smith & Wesson revolvers to Taurus revolvers, and I think that's doing both guns an injustice. These guns aren't designed to compete with Smith & Wesson revolvers, and Smith & Wesson revolvers are definitely not in the same category with the Taurus revolver. And to try to compare them for which is better, it is to, to me it's just a waste of time. Uh, anybody that knows anything about revolvers know that Smith & Wesson revolvers are much better revolvers than Taurus revolvers. But these revolvers are great for what they are, and, uh, and especially the price that you pay for them. Um, now cleaning up the uh, action parts on this gun actually improved the double and the single action on them. I don't think it lightened them up any, but it really smoothed them a lot. And the single action, it may have lightened it up slightly, but it's, uh, it was worth it. The disassembly and cleaning up of all of the internals was actually worth it. It, it, it really turned out, turned out nicely. And all in all, the gun turned out very well. I'm pleased with it. So, <clears throat> for anybody that is a little bit apprehensive about buying some of these old stainless revolvers, or any stainless gun for that matter, that's kind of scratched up and been rough housed a little bit, well, now you can see uh, exactly what you can do and what kind of results you can expect if you do it. It's not hard, and you can do it for little or no money. Uh, it just takes a little time. But listen, I appreciate your patience. I know this kind of ran a little long. And uh, thanks for watching. Until the next time, it's Big Swole 58 signing out.